Welcome everyone to a comparison video between the new Chinese supercarrier the Fujian and the UK Royal Navy's aircraft carrier the Queen Elizabeth. The Fujian, also known as the Type 003 carrier, is the second domestically produced carrier by China and the country's third aircraft carrier. The Queen Elizabeth, on the other hand, is a class of two ships, and they are the largest warships ever constructed in Britain. The Queen Elizabeth is intended to operate alongside the supercarriers of the US Navy to augment their combined air striking power. The Royal Navy has obviously been operating aircraft carriers for far longer than China has, although with the end of the Cold War, its naval air arm has deteriorated, both in terms of hardware and institutional knowledge. The development of the Queen Elizabeth aircraft carriers aimed to revive the naval aviation capabilities of the Royal Navy. Right now, we know a lot more about the Queen Elizabeth than the Fujian. I will focus on comparing specific capabilities across the two ships that can be ascertained with some degree of confidence in the case of the Fujian. Much of the capabilities of the Fujian are highly uncertain because the ship is still fitting out and because of the secrecy around how the Chinese Navy discloses information. Both carriers are conventionally powered and use integrated electric propulsion. However, the aviation facilities on both carriers are very different. The Fujian uses electromagnetic catapults to launch aircraft. In contrast, the Queen Elizabeth is a Stovall carrier, which stands for short takeoff and vertical landing. This means the carrier fighters take off using a ski jump, and when they have to return to the ship, they have to perform vertical landings. This difference will have an impact on their respective warfighting capabilities. In terms of development, I have covered the Type 003 Fujian extensively in other videos, so I'm going to be very brief here. It is China's first supercarrier. It was built by the Jianan Shipyard, which is based on an island at the mouth of the Yangtze River, technically in Shanghai. The Jianan Shipyard builds many of China's large surface combatants, especially the modern air warfare destroyers. Total construction period from the very beginning is about six years. Fabrication of the various modules for the Type 003 started in 2016. In 2020, the final assembly of the ship inside the dry dock began, and this took about two years. On the day of the launch, the Type 003 was officially named the Fujian, after the mainland province directly facing Taiwan across the Taiwan Strait. The Fujian is expected to be commissioned in 2024. The two ships of the Queen Elizabeth class, which are the Queen Elizabeth and the Prince of Wales, were commissioned in 2017 and 2019, respectively. Construction and the various sea trials took about eight years for each ship. And this kind of fits the modern trend where large warships are basically taking longer and longer to build, especially in the West. Overall development was undertaken by a consortium of mainly British and some European defence companies, collectively known as the Aircraft Carrier Alliance. They included BAE Systems, Babcock International and Thales Group. The Queen Elizabeth class is the replacement for the previous Invincible class light aircraft carriers, which were decommissioned in 2014. You would think that naming a warship the Invincible would be discouraged in the Royal Navy after HMS Invincible, the old battlecruiser, exploded in a giant fireball in the Battle of Jutland in 1916. But here we are. The Invincible class light carrier is designed for anti-submarine warfare, with a large complement of ASW helicopters, although it carries some Harrier aircraft for strike roll if needed. The Queen Elizabeth class, its successor, however, is designed primarily with strike missions and power projection in mind. 
During the design process, the Royal Navy had seriously considered a cattle bar system for aircraft launch and recovery. The acronym cattle bar is short for Catapult Assisted Takeoff but Arrested Recovery. At least six different designs for the Queen Elizabeth were submitted by the Aircraft Carrier Alliance, including three cattle bar configuration in addition to three Stovall configuration. However, the estimated cost for the cattle bar system rose sharply from the initial estimate while the ship was under construction. So, in the end, the Royal Navy had to settle for a Stovall configuration due to budgetary constraints. There is quite a substantial size difference between the two ships. The Chinese media reported that the Type 003 Fujian displaces between 85,000 and 90,000 tons, and presumably this means when fully loaded. This is down somewhat from the previous estimate, which suggested up to 100,000 tons. The Queen Elizabeth, on the other hand, has a lower displacement at about 65,000 tons fully loaded. The Fujian is about 316 meters in length at the deck level, and a beam of 73 meters at the widest point. The Queen Elizabeth has a length of 284 meters, and a beam of 73 meters at the widest point of its deck. So the Fujian is the larger ship by a substantial margin. The Queen Elizabeth actually has a very small crew proportional to its size, at around 1,600, including air crew and a company of Royal Marines. For comparison, the US Navy supercarriers, while being about 50% larger than the Queen Elizabeth, have a crew of closer to 5,000. The relative simplicity of equipment on the Queen Elizabeth, for example the Stovall configuration, and also a high degree of automation, help to limit the crew numbers to some extent. The Type 003 Fujian is estimated to have a crew of between 3,000 and 4,000 people, so somewhat closer to an American supercarrier, although the estimate for the Fujian is quite rough at this stage. The first structural difference I want to draw your attention to is the setup of the islands. The Fujian has a single island that controls all of its functions, including navigation and flight operations. A large integrated radar mast is built into the island, at the top of the bridge. The integrated mast helps to reduce the mutual interference between the various electronic systems contained inside and to reduce the exposure of the various antennae to being locked onto by enemy radar, and to lower the island's radar cross-section. The ship itself would not be stealthy at all, of course, because it is simply too big. But the stealth capabilities of the integrated mast minimize the probability of a direct hit on the island by enemy radar-guided missiles. The destruction of the island, or even just the radar mast, would of course be crippling for the carrier, so the stealth features reduce this risk. The Queen Elizabeth has a very different approach to bolster the survivability of the command and control facility, and this is through increased redundancy, so having more facilities that can do the same job if necessary in case one island gets taken out. The carrier is built with two smaller islands, as opposed to a single big island as on the Fujian. Now I know that each island on the Queen Elizabeth performs a different function. The forward island is responsible for navigation and control of the ship in general. The rear island is used for flight operations, because it is situated in the middle of the runway, which gives a wider field of vision for the entire deck. Each island is therefore optimized for their respective roles. However, each island can perform the duties of the other if necessary, giving the ship greater redundancy. Hopefully, the risk of a missile strike disabling one of the islands is already low to begin with. 
But just in case it does happen, the other remaining island can perform both navigation and flight operations. The separation of the different radars and communication devices between the two islands also reduces the degree of mutual interference between them. So having two islands can achieve to some extent the capabilities of a single integrated mast, like on the Fujian. Even if the individual islands and mast on the Queen Elizabeth isn't as stealthy or integrated. As for the actual radars, the suite for the Fujian is still uncertain. But we do know that the two active Chinese carriers use an ASAR multi-function radar, the Type 346A. It is dual bandwidth with a S-band and a C-band, which means it is suitable both for long-range volume search and medium-range search, and targets illumination to an extent. Since the construction of the first two carriers, China has developed an even more powerful Type 346B radar using gallium nitride semiconductors, and this has been deployed on the Type 055 destroyer. The Fujian will certainly have an ASAR radar, and it is likely to be an improvement from the ASAR radars on the previous Chinese carriers. Given China's advancements in radar technology and the operation of these new systems on active Chinese warships. As for the Queen Elizabeth, it still uses a PSAR radar for long range volume search, and this is the BAE's S1850M. The S1850M is also used on the UK's Type 45 destroyer although the Type 45 only uses it in a secondary role. The destroyer has recently shifted to the Samson ASAR radar as its main sensor. So the volume search radar on the Queen Elizabeth, I need to point out, is weaker than the two active Chinese carriers, and will almost certainly be weaker than the Fujian. The Queen Elizabeth also has a Type 997 Artisan 3D radar for medium-range search. There has been no official confirmation by the manufacturer on whether this is ASAR, but it would be very strange for them to keep this a secret if it was the case, given the general trend of navies shifting towards ASAR radars. So I have to conclude that the Queen Elizabeth currently lacks ASAR technology. Although I suppose for a carrier, this is not too big of a deal, as opposed to an air defense destroyer. Let's talk about the launch and recovery system for flight operations. This is important because it will set limitations on what aircraft can operate from the carrier as part of its air wing. The Type 003 Fujian is a cattle bar carrier with electromagnetic catapult. This represents the very cutting edge in terms of naval catapult technology. The electromagnetic catapult have several key advantages over the previous steam catapult, which has been used by the US Navy and others since the 1950s. For example, the electromagnetic catapult can accommodate a heavier launch weight and places less strain on the airframes. The electromagnetic catapults allow the Fujian to field relatively large and heavy aircraft without any necessary compromises in terms of the fuel and weapons payload. So the air wing of the Fujian can be very diverse and specialize in a wider range of missions. The Fujian is also expected to have four landing arrestor gears, although to be clear, these have not yet been installed. The arrestor is an essential component of naval aviation, at least for aircraft incapable of vertical landing. In contrast, the Queen Elizabeth is a Stovo carrier, which stands for short takeoff and vertical landing. Her carrier fighters take off from a ski jump using their own power, without catapult assistance. As an interesting side note, the ski jump on the Queen Elizabeth is quite different to the Chinese Stobar carriers and the Admiral Kuznetsov. 
It is a smaller design that takes up only half of the frontal width, in contrast to the full ramp on the Russian, Indian and Chinese carriers. This allows the Queen Elizabeth the additional deck space to park aircraft on the flat side of the front. But the pilots of the F-35Bs will have to take extra precaution, I suppose, to avoid swerving during takeoff. The Queen Elizabeth does not have landing arrestor cables, and this means all of its aircraft have to land vertically. Helicopters obviously can just land without any issues. But the fixed-wing fighters must be equipped with a special lift system to perform vertical landing. What this means is that the Queen Elizabeth is severely limited in terms of the composition of its air wing. It cannot accommodate any aircraft that require either catapult-assisted takeoff or arrested recovery. So this basically rules out any fixed-wing early warning aircraft, which tend to be quite heavy. The carrier fighters will have to dedicate space and weight to a vertical landing system, which reduces their capabilities in other areas, and I will talk about it. Basically, what I'm saying is, the Stovall configuration is a limiting factor to the capability of the air wing for the Queen Elizabeth. According to the Royal Navy, the ship does have the capacity to convert fairly easily into a cattle bar configuration, but so far there has not been serious effort to move in that direction. This is due in large to budgetary constraints. The differences in the launch and recovery system will have a major impact on the capabilities of the air wing on the two carriers. The Type 003 Fujian basically will have a full range of carrier aircraft. She will have the J-15T, a relatively heavy 4.5 generation carrier fighter that should be well suited for long range strike missions due to its relatively large maximum payload of weapons and fuel. There will also be the two seater J-15D, the electronic warfare version. The J-35, the fifth generation stealth fighter, is currently under development, but may only enter service in 2026 or 2027. But when it does, it will probably take over the air superiority role for the most part. Most importantly, the Fujian will be able to field the KJ-600, the fixed-wing airborne early warning and control system. Being a large fixed-wing aircraft, the KJ-600 will be much more capable than the existing early warning helicopters on China's two active Stobar carriers. For example, the KJ-600 will have a much greater range and should be able to dedicate more room and weight to carry the various sensors and communication devices. Basically, the Type 003's air wing is likely to be very diverse and comprehensive. Time to take a look at the air wing of the Queen Elizabeth. So basically we have the F-35Bs and various helicopters. The F-35s are obviously known for being a capable 5th generation fighter. The US Navy has enough confidence in the F-35s to have them as a core part of its naval aviation capability. However, the F-35Bs had to make certain sacrifices to carry the necessary equipment to perform vertical landing, as required on the Queen Elizabeth. Compared to the F-35Cs, its cattle bar cousin, the F-35Bs have a substantially smaller combat radius, owing to a smaller fuel capacity, and a smaller payload of weapons and ordnances. The other major limitation is in the airborne early warning and control systems, which is generally held to be an important force multiplier in air warfare. The Queen Elizabeth relies on the Merlin Maritime Mark II helicopters, which can carry a set of airborne early warning equipment named the Crow's Nest, to perform reconnaissance duties. The Merlins also double up as anti-submarine helos as well, and are cheaper and require less man-hours than a proper fixed-wing early warning system. 
However, while I can believe that the Merlin is a capable reconnaissance helo, they are no substitutes for the range, the capacity, and the networking capability of proper airborne early warning and control aircraft. There are some discussions between UK military watchers about the possibility of adopting the US-made V-22 Osprey for the Queen Elizabeth. The Osprey is a large AEW aircraft that can land vertically. But the general consensus is that the Osprey is too expensive both to buy and maintain for the budget-constrained Royal Navy. So taking everything together, I will say that the Stovo configuration of the Queen Elizabeth is a major limiting factor on the capability of its air wing, compared to the Type 003. Moving on to the general aviation facilities, first I will briefly cover the Type 003 Fujian. This is mainly for the benefit of the new viewers. The Fujian is estimated to carry between 60 to 70 aircraft during normal operations. We don't really know the exact composition of this air wing, but it may compose of around 50 fixed wing jet aircraft and somewhere around a dozen helicopters, the latter mostly for anti submarine purposes. During an emergency or in wartime, the Fujian will almost certainly carry more aircraft, possibly up to 80. Or even more. The Fujian's aircraft capacity should also increase once the J-35s enter service, because the J-35 is smaller than the J-15. The Fujian has two aircraft elevators on the starboard side, facing out towards the sea. It has three aircraft launch positions fitted with catapults. Two are in the front, and one is in the middle position. The overall area of the flight deck has been estimated to be around 17,700 square meters. The Queen Elizabeth normally carries around 40 aircraft, including 24 F-35B fixed-wing fighters and 14 to 16 helicopters. However, if the situation requires, for example during wartime deployment, the carrier has a surge capacity for a maximum of 60 aircraft, including 40 F-35Bs. The relatively small size of the F-35 obviously helps with the surge capacity, but this is still less than the maximum capacity of the Type 003. There is speculation that the Queen Elizabeth can carry an absolute maximum of more than 70 aircraft. But this is unlikely in my opinion, at least not in any operational capacity. Like the Type 003, the Queen Elizabeth also has two deck edge elevators on the starboard side for lifting aircraft from the hangar to the deck. One elevator is situated between the two islands and another towards the aft. The elevator is large enough to accommodate a V-22 Osprey if needed. So the potential purchase of this US tilt rotor aircraft for airborne early warning purposes has been deliberately left open as an option. Unlike the Fujian, and indeed most aircraft carriers from around the world, the Queen Elizabeth does not have an angled flight deck. This is because there is simply no need for it, because the fighters undertake vertical landing instead of conventional landing on an angled deck. There is only a single runway, although a very long one, with what appears to be only a single aircraft launch position. The Queen Elizabeth does not even have jet blast deflectors. This means the fighters cannot even line up one behind the other on the runway which would have enabled consecutive takeoffs in short order. The area of the flight deck is 16,000 square meters, slightly smaller than the Fujian. My opinion is that the Fujian should be able to put aircraft into the air a lot faster than the Queen Elizabeth during an operational surge. The Fujian has multiple runways together with three aircraft launch positions which clearly can process aircraft launches faster than the single runway on the Queen Elizabeth. 
the lack of jet blast deflectors further limits the potential of the single runway on the British carrier to allow multiple takeoffs in quick succession. Lastly, the Fujian is a substantially larger carrier, and unsurprisingly, it has a larger maximum aircraft capacity and a wider flight deck. So I have no choice but to conclude that the Fujian is a much more capable floating airfield. In terms of self-defense, the Queen Elizabeth has three of the Phalanx Seawiz closing weapon systems. This is of course the standard point defense on US and NATO warships. The Phalanx is intended mainly to intercept incoming cruise missiles. It is considered reliable, although by this time it is getting outdated. The ship does not have any medium-range air defense capabilities and will have to rely on its escorts and carrier fighters. The Queen Elizabeth does have other smaller defensive weapons, including miniguns, but they are intended for defense against stuff like fast attack boats and other asymmetric threats. On the Type 003, the Fujian, we have seen four of a new variant of the Type 1130 Seawiz autocannons. They are equipped with a new type of phased array fire control radars, most likely an ASAR radar. Now, I know that the Type 1130 has been removed in a recent photo, but from my understanding, this is a normal part of fitting out a warship after launch. In terms of self-defense, the Chinese carrier also appears to be more capable. I've done quite a lot of research on both the Type 1130 and the Phalanx, and my view is that the Type 1130 is the better system by far. Furthermore, the previous Chinese carriers also have the HQ-10 short-range SAMs, and because of this precedent, it seems likely the HQ-10 will be installed on the Fujian as well, providing another layer of air defense capability. All told, both the Fujian and the Queen Elizabeth have merits in certain areas of their design, although I think we can tell which one is the better ship. There are certain features on the Queen Elizabeth that I like. For example, I like having two islands, because it's increased the redundancy in the carrier, with each of these islands able to perform the function of the other, if necessary, in case one of them gets disabled by battle damage. I also consider the F-35B to be a strong carrier fighter, despite the limitations imposed by having to use a vertical landing system. However, the advantages of the Fujian over the Queen Elizabeth are too many to list. The Type 003 has a more modern integrated radar mast with purpose-designed stealth features. This helps to reduce the risk of a direct hit on the island by radar-guided projectiles. The Chinese carrier is also likely to have ASAR radars for air search purposes, and these will probably use gallium nitride semiconductors like on the Type 055 destroyer. This is several steps ahead of the search radars on the Queen Elizabeth. The Type 003 is a catobar design with a state-of-the-art electromagnetic catapult. This will allow her to have a much more diverse and effective air wing, especially in terms of the airborne early warning systems and combat networks. The Fujian, being a larger carrier, also appears to be a more capable floating airbase. It can carry substantially more aircraft and has multiple launch positions. Lastly, the Fujian possesses the superior suite of self-defense weapons. So, in conclusion, I have to say that the Fujian is clearly the more capable supercarrier. The Queen Elizabeth, while it is innovative in some respects, it has been hampered by the budgetary limitations for the Royal Navy's naval aviation. The Fujian ticks all the boxes for a conventional carrier, while the Queen Elizabeth only ticks some of the boxes. I am inclined to say that when the Fujian enters service, 
it will be without a doubt the best conventional carrier in the world. I hope you enjoyed my comparison video. I hope you found it somewhat balanced, neutral, and informative. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.